Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Pastor Rick Yusey from Maranatha in Plain City, Ohio. In the past week, uh, a baseball legend passed away. His name was Hank Aaron. And if you know anything about baseball, Hank Aaron was chasing one of the most prized records in baseball, and that was, that was the most home runs, right, over your career. And Babe Ruth held that record. And uh, Hank Aaron, in 1974, was, was chasing it and coming closer and closer to that record. And in that process of Hank Aaron going for and, and, and was going to surpass that record, he faced a lot of opposition. Not just opposition from a baseball skills perspective, but opposition because of his color, the color of his skin. Like he faced death threats and, and all kinds of, of racist remarks. And he got, matter of fact, uh, the US Postal Service said he received in 1974 over 900,000 pieces of mail. Like that, that's more than any private citizen had ever received before. And one third of those were confirmed to be hate mail, death threats, and those kind of things against his life because of the color of his skin, because he was Hank Aaron going after a record set by Babe Ruth. And as I, I, I looked at that, it's like, what different perspectives that we all have in life? And Hank Aaron said, you know, later in his life, he says, those, uh, those insults, the, the racist remarks, the letters he received drove him on, right, to, to continue on and break that record and to break barriers. And, and he said he hung on to those to remind himself even later in life, not to be surprised at anything, that, that though we've come a long way, there's still a long way to go. And so in our lives, what does that mean for us today? Uh, I, I think of what Paul said in Galatians, that... The gospel is for all people, for all ages. And, and he makes that clear that the gospel is, is that. And he says in Galatians 3, 27 to 29, for those of you who were baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ. There is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and female, since you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. So, so in the body of Christ, in the church, like we're all one, we're all equal, but it doesn't get rid of some of the differences there are between us. I've heard well-meaning people say that we should be colorblind, but, but, but I think it's more like we should value and celebrate the differences that there are. Like, yes, we're unified in Christ, but, but in that diversity, we should celebrate all the things that God's bringing together, all that we have to add, all that there is that, that comes together because God created the Jews and the Gentiles, and, and, and male and female, and there were still differences within the church. And as a matter of fact, it was difficult to live with those differences within the church. Like, like even the apostles, Peter and Paul, the, the, the titans of the early church. Like Paul had to confront Peter because of how he was treating Gentiles, the hypocrisy that he had. And, and I don't have time to get into that whole story yet, but, but just know it was not easy to do that. And it's not easy now. As a matter of fact, when you look at these, you can say, well, I can see how there's Jew and Gentile. I can see how there's male and female differences. But what about the slave and the, and the free? And yes, there, there is a lot of inequity in that. Yet, yet God knew that his people, he, like he birthed his people in Egypt, in slavery. He took them out of that bondage into freedom. And we need to know that God did that. Like God did more to free people, he, not just in Christ, but to free people from, from the sin that, that engulfs the world and the Satan lies and deception. But we have to be open to the fact that those lies and deception are still going on today. Jesus, as a matter of fact, showed compassion on those that were marginalized and mistreated and judged and different. Like God wanted to free us from all that deceit and ugliness. And, and so as I was thinking about um, Hank Aaron and thinking about the life he led, and, and not that, he's, that he just had baseball skills, but that he was a leader. He was a strong person. Like he rose in management within Major League Baseball when it was hard to do that as a black man. And he was gracious. 
And, and I look at that and I think, how are we to live the gospel of Jesus Christ? How are we to show Jesus Christ to others? Like we're to walk in the same way that Jesus Christ walked. And we're to know that it's, it's hard to do that. And how can we do our part? Each one of us do our part to, to tear down the barriers and the walls that are put up between us. How can we listen to each other and understand that there are different perspectives? How can we speak out against racism? How can we, when we hear off-color jokes, do, do we laugh at them or do we stand up and do we say, you know, that's not right? Do, do, we, do we show the compassion of Jesus Christ to others? Can we admit that we're wrong? Can we admit that there are things in our lives that have that that don't go along with the gospel of Jesus Christ and that our behavior deviates from the truth of the gospel? The gospel is truth. The gospel is always right. So, so what I want us to see as we walk through our lives this week, what in what ways can we make the world better? Because we all have sin in our lives and we all have ways in which we're growing. It's not like, bam, we we got the gospel, we're a new creation, none of us have improvement to do. It's like, no, it's a process now to become more and more like Jesus Christ. So let's become more like Jesus Christ and show his compassion to all people. And maybe the church can show what it means to live unified in the middle of great, precious diversity. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on The Bottom Line.